Well, I won't let the sun go down on me. It's BBC Radio Oxford. A very good afternoon. Now, my next guest, Pam Foley, is an artist and sculptor. She grew up in Massachusetts, moved to California, but ended up here in Oxfordshire. She lives in Jericho, and she joins me now. Hi, nice to be here. Good to see you. What a story you've got. Just, just kind of, it must seem actually, I mean, being here in Oxfordshire now, it must seem that your childhood growing up in Massachusetts and California, it must have been like a lifetime ago. Well, it was a lifetime ago. I mean, I'm going into my sixth decade, so I've got a long life of different experiences. Mm -hmm. And yes, I grew up in Massachusetts in a town called, I'm going to say it in a local way. Oh, do that. Yes, yeah. Tatton. You know, oh. it comes from the English town here in this country. So do you know what I'm saying? Uh, Tatton. Taunton. Taunton, yeah. Taunton. Taunton. So it's named, as a lot of Massachusetts cities and towns are named after um, places here. Mm. So that's where I spent most of my um, high school years mm. and then moved to Boston and so came on. here and so on and so forth. Quite different places though, Massachusetts and California, I should imagine. Yeah, I think, I think I, growing up in a small town, which Taunton is, um, I just had this idea of the world, you know, mm. I wanted to see the world. And there were two places that just held that fascination. One was London <laughs> and one was um, California. Mm. And uh, when I was 20, I came here first. So I was a student and um, took some time off of uni and came over to do, uh, I, I had arranged to do community service as volunteers, mm. and I was to be sent to uh, Bristol to work with what was then called delinquent boys. Mm. And when I came, so I arrived, I was 20, fresh off the plane. Just, just describe yeah. that feeling, because that must have been quite a culture shock to, to arrive in the UK. Yeah, I, I just was so excited. I, when I, and it was so different then, of course. The first thing I did was, foolishly, I, I had spent my, I saved up to get the plane ticket, <laughs> saved some cash, and took a, believe it or not, taxi from Heathrow to Chelsea, where I had booked a bed and breakfast. So that was like half of my money gone already. <laughs> and um, I think I was jet lagged, so I sort of fell into that. And in the morning when I woke up, uh, after sleeping maybe a day or, and a half or something, and the, the other people in the um, bed and breakfast who were from Australia, New Zealand, I met all these people from all over the world. Mm. And they were, they said, why didn't you come for breakfast? They couldn't believe I hadn't come for breakfast because, you know, they'd come from so far with a little bit of jet lag. So mm. um, anyway, I got sorted with, with living there and I learned about these other parts of the country and uh, about, about the world and meeting these Australians, especially, I'd say, how long are you... How long have you been away from home? Only four months, only five months. And it just seemed an incredible experience for me because I had not really gone very many places at all. You were broadening your horizons. I was broadening my horizons, yeah. How did you survive financially, having spent then half the, yeah. half the money that you had on a taxi fare from, yeah. from the airport to Chelsea? Yeah. Well, then I had to hit the pavements, uh, which I had intended to do. So I, I um, went to see community services volunteers mm. and asked to postpone my involvement with them, which they said was fine. And... Uh, and hit the pavements, and within three hours, I got a job at the um, Dorchester Hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked in what they called the sales ledger department. That's how long it all was. And you had to, my job was to figure out the VAT for all the bills, which was hand done. Mm. So we had to calculate it, write it on the bill. That was so, my job. So how long, how long did you spend in London before you came here to Oxfordshire? Oh, gosh, this is a long story. I don't know how much time. So I... Um, uh, so I worked, saved money, traveled around Europe, then did the CSB work, went back to the States, continued with my studies, mm. then came back here on an um, exchange program to Nottingham this time. So what, what, are we, what are we talking about? So you first arrived in 1978. Yeah. So what, what, what year are we talking about? Now, now? we're talking about 1980. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in Nottingham. And this time I was doing sort of proper studies of philosophy and so on. I loved actually the... The way of um, teaching, I loved the, the informality with the tutors, we'd go to the pub and so on, you know, it was really nice, I, I, I very much enjoyed it, but I had also intended to spend the rest of my time in London, which I did, so I um, moved, moved to London at that time and got more work in sort of the hotel B&B &B mm. area, but I think this is all leading to why I came to <laughs> eventually here, met a Brit, as you do, yeah, and uh, uh, so uh, then when I went back to the States, he then followed me. So mm -hmm. he did his PhD 
in Connecticut and I was in Boston. Yeah. When you first came to Oxfordshire, what, what were your first impressions? Well, then when we, did, when we we decided to to eventually move here in 1999. We he's from Bambury, so um, we wanted to be in Oxfordshire, and I just thought, well, Oxford, you know, I've heard of that. <laughs> I'd been here before, <laughs> done some, gone to some Oxford parties when I was, you know, younger and knew some students, um, and uh, yeah, that was quite interesting during the punk years, going to a punk party at Oxford <laughs> University. Anyway, um, and. Uh, yeah, so in 1999, when, when we moved here, by then that time we have an eight, eight-year-old daughter. Um, we wanted her to, to be grow up in, in a European culture mm. and uh, in a world-wise city like Oxford. And um, yeah, that worked out. And I decided also to set up a, a sculpture studio. Mm. So how were you welcomed into the community, community when, when you moved here? Well, I live in Jericho, which which is undergone, had been then and still is undergoing some transformations. I enjoyed uh, meeting my neighbors and, and many of them are still around, quite a lot have moved away. Um, and having a child does help, you know, get integrated into a community. On the art side, I got stuck in and, and um, became a, a coordinator for Art Weeks, mm. the um, open studios event that happens mm. every year. And so I met a lot of the local artists and, and uh, we put on various events and um, exhibited and mm. together and so on. Well, we'll talk about uh, your, your career as a mm. sculptor and indeed an artist as well. And I think what's interesting about you, Pam, is that you haven't lost your accent after all this <laughs> yes, time. I, have. No, I, have. <laughs> I mean, do, do you go back to the States? You, yes. And yeah. so I would imagine that they say, well, you sound pretty English. But, yeah. but, but actually, to me, you still sound as though you've got quite a strong draw. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're certainly well travelled. We'll, we'll talk about, uh, continue to talk about your adventures <laughs> And uh, indeed, why you think Oxford is so important to the world of art as well. After this, from Dinah Ross. 17th of January. It's actually my daughter's first birthday tomorrow. I just, I, you know, I, I sort of forgot that at the beginning of the day. I'll make a cake later. You won't let you forget it tomorrow. <laughs> She's only one. Oh, Doubt she knows what's yeah, going on, Pam. Right. <laughs> now, my guest in the studio is Pam Foley. Uh, she's an artist and sculptor. Grew up, as you've been hearing, in Massachusetts and California. She came to the UK in 1978. She went back to the States. Then she came back. She met a Brit. She landed up here in Oxfordshire, and she now lives uh, in Jericho. So when you were growing up, let's just, just go back to your child a little mm -hmm. bit. Were you harboring um, a, a desire to be a sculptor and an artist? I think I had aspirations, I had dreams to be a dancer. Mm. I really liked dance, and I had been taking dance lessons from the age of, I don't know, five or six. No, sorry, probably about seven or eight. I was doing ballet and acrobatics and things like that. Um, but there's a lot of work involved in dancing, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of practice. It, I just, I didn't really like that bit of it. And I think the, the art, the visual art came later, and it wasn't something that was even part of my childhood at all. And the only thing um, I suppose that I really enjoyed was um, mucking about in the house. I was, my mother was the DIY person, not my father, mm. and I was always her assistant. She came from an immigrant, an Italian immigrant family mm. to Boston, and they were all builders and carpenters and so on. She was the girl, she didn't learn that stuff only by osmosis. And then when she, you know, had her own house and, grew, you know, had her family and so on, she started buying routers, routers and um, saws and all that other kit and taught me a lot of that stuff. And also the other sort of female arts of um, sewing and knitting and all that. So I, I got a sort of well-rounded um, practical education, I'd say, from my mother. Mm. And I like to take things apart, put them together, and I, we would call that assemblage, um, putting things together to make things. And I always made things for my friends. So they were always three-dimensional, and um, in that way you would today call those sculptures. So, I when, mean, so when did you do your first sculpture then? I mean, and what material did you use? Well, I can remember my very first one was um, during, uh, I think I must have been maybe eight in, in school, and it was a science project, and my science project was on Einstein. Mm. And my mother made me baker's clay. Mm. <laughs> and I made a bust of Einstein, his face and his head, and I used cotton wool for the hair. 
<laughs> that was my very first one. What about your first painting? Well, I'm not really a painter. I would not say I'm a painter per se. I mean, I guess I've just done things on my, I don't, I haven't shown, I didn't, I'm mostly a three-dimensional person. So mm. I actually started off in pottery, mm. or pottery as Grace and Perry would say. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, uh, so I, when I was at Nottingham, actually, in my exchange program back in 1980-ish, mm. um, I was doing academic subjects, but I lived near um, one of the satellite um, branches of um, of the university, and there was a uh, a pottery studio there, but nobody was using it. I managed to find the person who was in charge of it, and mm -hmm. he gave me the key and said, "Just get on with it." So I sort of taught myself how to use the wheels and how to work with clay, mm -hmm. and then when I got back to Boston, um, pursued that, and then. When I was in California, I was part of a ceramics cooperative. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. When, when you walk through the, the city of Oxford for the very first time, mm. I mean, it is full of breathtaking architecture. That, in some way, must be responsible for inspiring you to develop your talents. Yeah, I think that Oxford is a beautiful city. It really is. I love the the, the two main waterways that go through the the canal and the um, the uh, the river, and. Uh, just I love I live in Jericho, so I, it's nice to walk around the city center. But also, where we live in Jericho, um, there was a lot of variety mm -hmm. of, um, of uh, it's a, quite, quite a quite a can I say it's like funky little place, yeah. you know, which I was I sort of used to living about. in California and San mm -hmm. Francisco and so on. Uh, um, and uh, but I'm more inspired, I suppose, by urban settings mm -hmm. rather than maybe Oxford in particular. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, if you'd have stayed in the States, yeah. would you be doing what you're doing now, do you think? Um, I think so. I was, actually. You know, I, I um, lived in San Francisco. I was teaching. I used to run a um, women artist gallery and organization with exhibitions once a month. So, we would change the exhibitions. They were selected. Um, and I was doing my own work. Mm -hmm. I think when I moved here, I flipped it over so that I, my studio work was the primary and then teaching secondary and, uh, um, you know, just made, made the choice to, to, to focus on, on producing work instead. Mm -hmm. And I switched from ceramic work to um, sculptural work. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your sort of the, the materials that you use now then when yeah. you're sculpting? Yeah, well, I still do use clay. Mm -hmm. I start with clay and with plaster. Or with plaster, sorry, not together, and uh, make the original out of those materials, and then I make a mold. Mm. And, what, that. And, and what do you sculpt? Is is it sort of you know the the, the, the human body, or, or or what's your sort of inspiration for your sculpture? Well, my inspiration is the human body, the female form, um, and I abstract from that. So I I may um, uh, choose to sort of um, emphasize one area over another, or mm. one, one section of the body over another, or elongate mm. uh, certain parts of the body. And I'm very much into texture as well, so I, the, my work is very heavily textured. Mm. So after the original is made and I make the mold, then I cast it into um, most often iron resin so that it brings out the texture and then it, uh, it rusts as iron does. So I really like the idea that these are found from the earth. You know, mm. I have that idea that there's an abundance of, there's abundance of uh, art festivals, exhibitions here in Oxfordshire. Um, I, I know you're involved in Art Week. Do you get involved with uh, things like um, Art in Action, uh, Water Perry, things like that? Um, no, not directly. I mean, I have a friend who's who's a jeweler, Pat, if you're listening, <laughs> Pat Freeman, a wonderful uh, um, silversmith, and I, I go in and sort of hang out with her. Mm. But um, I've been there, but I've not put my not being part of it um, well we'll talk about some of the projects yeah. that uh, you are involved in in a couple of moments time and um, after this just want to have fun it's bbc radio oxford my guest in the studio is pam foley she's an artist and sculptor grew up in massachusetts and california she arrived here in oxfordshire when uh, she how old in fact were you because you got to london when you were 20 1978 Mm. So you're asking me how old I was in 1999. That's a rude question. <laughs> oh, I'm 56 now, so you you can work that out. <laughs> <laughs> so we mentioned that um, I mean you're very involved with um with, with various projects, art projects here in Oxfordshire. So let's just sort of mention some of them and be more specific about what what you do. 
Right. Well, I'll just mention one, which is um, the Oxford Sculptors Group, which is a group, as it says, of sculptors. Yeah. It's an artist-run organization. As um, and, and for any of your listeners who may not know about artist groups, any group that has a name in it that says society or group, usually that means it's artist-run. Um, and uh, they've existed for, you know, hundreds of years. Mm. Um, and usually what, what it means is that our, the, the, in our case, the sculptors come together mm. and we um, meet each other, we, we support each other. It's a social group. It's a, it's social, a social group, group but we group. also have exhibitions. So one exhibition uh, on now is at the North Wall uh, Art Center, just around the corner from here. And that's um, got uh, about, that's 23 sculptors with 82 pieces of work. Mm. So I've got a sculptor in there and two drawings. Do inspire one another? Um, yeah, well, we, I think more technical help would be the, I mean, we're geeks, so we talk about glue for hours, you know? <laughs> but I don't know, inspiration. Mine's stronger than yours. <laughs> um, I think it's more, um, I think by for us who are professionally doing this uh, work, uh, you know, sculpting work and then and selling it, mm. it's, we've kind of found our voice. So it's mm. the inspiration maybe is our own. We have to find it individually rather than from each other. How long does it take you to do a piece of work, an average piece of work? Right. Well, it depends, you know, when inspiration strikes. I mean, I'm working on a piece now that I'm thinking, I just sort of started really getting stuck in yesterday, but I've been thinking about it for a couple of months. <laughs> And it's because, you know, I think about it, then I have to sort of build the, the armature, which is sort of the internal structure. Mm. And you and do it in your head before you actually do it properly? I never write. I never do drawings. I never do. Um, some people do. I don't. Um, but, yeah, so it's in my head. I have a sort of picture in my head. And then because, I, in this case, I'm working in clay, it's very malleable, and I can mm. change my mind. And, where do you go when you've got this idea, you've got it firmly in your head, you think, right, I'm going to do it now. So where do you go to do that? Yeah, I have a, I have a studio, which is um, in, near Banbury, just outside of Banbury. So I commute actually out of the city. So it's really nice, no traffic and so on. So I go from North Oxford and Jericho, where I live, into um, my studio, mm -hmm. uh, which takes about half an hour. And uh, that's where I am. So this is on a farm. I've been there, as I said, 14 years. And uh, I love it. I've got a big space. Um, there are other businesses in the farm, uh, cars, guys, <laughs> um, furniture guys. I'm the only artist there and have been all this time. So it means if I need heavy lifting, I always mm. have <laughs> somebody to help me. But likewise, as you said earlier, you know, you like to sort of taking things apart and putting them back yeah. together. So uh, I'd imagine you're quite useful uh, on the farm as well. If anybody wants, you know, a tractor taken apart and put uh, together things no, like that. There are car guys that do that, but yeah, no, that's it's it's really a nice mix, you know. I mean, I'm not surrounded by artists, which is some artists might find that really hard to 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 take, but I I like it. Pam, it's been lovely to meet you. Nice to meet um, you too. Good luck, good continuing luck. Um, with, with certainly your, your next your next project, uh, your next sculpture is is that again the the, the human form, a woman's yes. body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, uh, be, uh, very tall, about six feet tall. Oh, okay. yeah. Pam, it's been lovely to see you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very coming. much. Thanks. BBC Radio Oxford. Weather. And here's Alexis. <laughs>